The goal of today is how do we solve inequalities? Uh, so the topic is just solving multi-step inequalities. So we're taking what we know about equations and putting them into inequalities. Don't forget today's date. We've got an example already written down on our piece of paper. The bad thing is, is we need to do some sort of minor note. So I'm gonna pull up a white screen to give some sort of side note. When I say a side note, you've got all that space on the left side. We're gonna put some side notes in to recall some information. So yeah, let's recall from last year. If we've got a symbol that something's less than or greater than, that means it's not going to include that number. It's everything either smaller than the number or bigger than the number. And we're going to use an open circle to represent that, what I'm going to call a boundary. We're going to use an open circle to represent that boundary on the number line. So then if we have a less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, that's where the closed circle is going to represent the boundary because now it's including whatever the value we get. So write that off on to the left side. But something about a foreign language, we see a symbol, we say one thing, but then we have to interpret it another way, like some sort of definition, like how, okay, what does less than actually mean? So we've got a symbol, this is how we say it, but technically the definition goes back to the number line. Um, if we wanna use the less than symbol, we're saying, okay, so if I want to say 5 is less than 6, that literally means 5 lies to the left of 6 on the number line, as I read that left to right. So now if I say something is greater than something, so like negative 2 is greater than negative 5, that means the negative 2 lies to the <coughs> right of the other number on a number line. So it lies to the right of the number line. First example, what we're going to do is we're going to solve these inequalities and then graph them on a number line. So I'm going to use the same strategy that we used a couple days ago, picking on the little guy first, so that way I'm not dealing with a negative x term. This is saying one half is less than all the numbers that I want to graph. If one half is less than all the other numbers, that means I want one half to lie to the left of whatever my arrow is. I want one half lying to the left of whatever arrow I shade. So either way, one half is the boundary. And let's recall the information we had on the previous uh, slide up here. It's a greater than symbol. That means it's not I'm not going to be equal to one half. So I need to represent that I'm not equal to a half. I'm going to have an open circle <coughs> where one half would be in between zero and one. So our solution in this case. Not only are we going to write it algebraically, but we're also going to draw a picture of what it means. So we've got another situation. We're going to solve it. This is not like a problem we've seen in previous notes. This is a brand new, brand new problem. How are we going to attack it? So we're going to solve it just like a typical solving issue. So they are not we're not crossing that inequality sign. We just look at them as what they are. So that's negative one W. Yeah, we're gonna divide by a negative one and it flips the sign. You're changing the direction of the meaning. We're no longer wanting the numbers to the right of, we're wanting the numbers to the left of. So keeping that in mind, our solution is W is greater than or equal to positive five. My bad. So in this case, it's equal to, so we're going to have a closed circle. And we're shading to the left. Hopefully we all started the same way, uh, picking on 3Z.
I either can make sense of this saying, okay, there's about three holes and so many left over, or I can put it in my calculator, either one. So it's gonna be in between three and four, but closer to four. So we have an open circle at 18 fifths, and I want all the numbers less than 18 fifths. Less than means you lie to the left. 